What is up guys, Red Reject here, and today, like, I, I gotta get this out here because I was like, you know, I, I, I was uh, focusing on, like, school and work, so I didn't really upload much, but, like, you know, I'm like, I, I had to, like, lock in, you know, I, I saw all the stuff that went down in the last couple months, like, not even the last couple months, within, like, this month, the Nintendo Direct went off. They, uh, Sony loses a crap ton of money. They, they lay off like 900 employees. Like, what is happening? Microsoft bringing games to other platforms, like, officially, not like old games that they brought to the console. That's crazy, bro. Okay, I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure to get all this stuff, like, covered because this is, just, this is a turning moment in gaming history it's kind of crazy so i'd also like actually I'd, I'd also like to thank uh fandom trash for making my renders for this video she's again been a big help couldn't have done it without her and with that let's get on to the video okay all right so i got everything here all right first thing to cover yo the 10 billion dollar stock loss that was like the straw that broke the camel's back in my opinion yeah they lost stock and i do believe let me see here so the choice by sony to drop its predictions of 25 million ps5 sales in the upcoming fiscal year to 21 million caused the company stock to dive this move is just a symptom of a bigger problem at the tech giant, according to the Jeffries Equ Equity Analyst in Atul. Oh man, look at these. Is that even... Oh, that's a person. I thought that was like a... Okay, okay, look at me. I just got off of work. I'm a bit, I'm a bit like, dumb. Let's see... Do, 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 all about Sony's margins. What do we got here? Anyways, the Sony ten billion dollar loss was basically like they were they basically lowered their predictions. A lot of the the um. So basically, um, I believe that the, one of the reasons for the $10 billion loss was due to like Sony's high budget. From what I've heard, but well, we can find that out in this video. Actually, let's find it down. Let me see here. Let's see if GameSpot has any more information on this subject. Let's see here. Okay, so it's people have been saying that video the video games are getting more expensive to make. And it's like for some reason it's more I would assume that it's it's more expensive to make the games. And it's like it's like you're not accounting for how much money you put into the game compared to how much you sell. And Sony will be having no games until April of 2025. They said that themselves. Though we have games like Hell Divers, Foam Stars, and a few other games, so I don't think it's like we got at least maybe like a few months of content. Alrighty, that that is that. Ten billion dollar loss. That's on Sony. Personally, now this is just me. I think that Sony would benefit from not going as crazy as they're going with the graphics and like the the quality of the games back in the ps2 days they were dropping banger after banger they released like tons of games just during the ps2 life cycle during the ps5 life cycle we're basically just seeing like what, what, what is it like four or five games a year maybe like one or two at the start one in the middle two at the end something along those lines they usually want to wait till christmas to release a lot some of the bangers but like that's not a lot bro like you're not really enticing people to come to your 
console to come to your like side of the console wars you're like you're not encouraging people to do anything look look like look, look lower the quality of the games so you can bring out more games you look at nintendo sure they're the graphics on a Nintendo system are like PS3 era or maybe a little bit stronger, but they're releasing tons of games. So maybe like lower the graphical quality, lower the budget, and just focus on releasing genuinely fun games that you don't have to like watch cinematics for. Like just like something basic, you know, Ratchet and Clank was good. Jack and Daxter was good. Sly Cooper was good. God of War was good. It is good, but look, those games didn't pop off because of the crazy graphics. Sure, some of them had good graphics for the time, but they popped off for the gameplay. You don't need crazy graphics when you have gameplay, and when you're focusing on the gameplay and not the graphics, you can put money elsewhere, like ac acquisitions. You know, that'd be pretty good. Maybe bolstering up your developers. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. That, that's, just, that's, that's just a thought. I highly doubt Sony's going to listen to me because they suck and they never listen to people. Anyways. Boom. This is the one I'm most pissed off about. PlayStation laid off 900 employees. Not to mention both Naughty Dog and Insomniac were affected. And uh, London Studios was shut down. Like, gone. Like, what the hell, bro? I thought you guys were going good after Helldivers. I've never seen a PlayStation game blow up like Helldivers in my life. That's crazy. And you guys still had to lay off 900 people. Like, what, what the heck, Sony? I thought you guys were going good. I didn't know you had to lay off employees. I even saw Instagram's, uh, I mean, uh, Insomniac's Instagram. And when I was on there, they, they literally had to like be all like, hey... Uh, we are sorry to all the people that got laid off. Please, these are good people. Just, you know, please hire them. They do hard work kind of a thing. And it made me nearly cry. It was the saddest thing ever. And here's the thing. If Insomniac and Naughty Dog are your bread and butter, then why are you screwing over everybody, including them, or moving people from the from the from their, their studio? Like, don't you want to treat them like your baby, you know? Like... Give them some leeway. They're bringing it. They're bringing you in money. Like at the end of the day, they're like the breadwinners. Why are you doing this to them? Like you, y'all. They have their reasons. I'm sure. I'm sure PlayStation has some weird, like reason relating to statistics and profit that are, like, that are explaining this or something. I, I just don't know. Like I, again, I don't know anything about business. But there must be a pretty big business reason to screw over your company like this. Not like completely. Let's see here. This person says one might argue that laying off 900 people seems like the opposite of growing a company. Facts. Unfortunately, they believe that at least in this case, delivering good experience to its fans necessitates delivering horrible experience to its employees. Dude, you guys just got Insomniac and Bungie and a couple of others and you're putting the fans over these employees. These employees are like your worker bees, dude. You gotta at least give them the basic necessities, treat them right, you know, or you're gonna get a horrible product. Like, screw the fans. If your things aren't right internally, then how are you gonna, th how are things gonna work externally? This is ridiculous. Ooh, which ones are facing layoffs? Yeah, I'm not playing that. I'm not trying to get reported or something like that. Okay, the layoffs will get affected. 20 game developers owned by Sony. Naughty Dog, Insomniac are among the... Oh, dang, dude. Oof, Guerrilla Games got hit. London Studios got hit. You just got Fire Sprite. What are you doing? You guys just got Fire Sprite. And they're mad. Oh, look at that. The developers are getting mad. Oh, shoot. 
What is up, bro? Like, this isn't right. Like, like these are your people. I, I always thought Sony treated their employees better. But uh, I guess I was wrong. I guess they're just a... Uh... <sighs> that, that's, that's effed up. That really is. The talent of it soon to be laid off employees and thank them for their contributions. Dude, what the fuck? This is mean. Boy. Alrighty, on to the next story. Microsoft will bring four Xbox games to other... Okay, this one's kind of big. Not, I'd never think they do, they're doing this, but they were kind of pro-multi-platform. So they're bringing a, f a couple of their Xbox games to Nintendo and PlayStation. So, let's see here... I believe a lot of them are bringing uh, the games next month in March. So we'll have that to look forward to. Let's see if they list the games here. Huh. Well, I know a few of them. One of them is Sea of Thieves, Grounded. Let me see how many things here. There we go. So it is... That's the one I just looked at. I mean, Call of Duty was already on other consoles, but that one is kind of been multi-platform. Hi-Fi Rush, Sea of Thieves, and Starfield. No, Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, uh, uh, Grounded, and yeah, I think that was one. There was one more, but again, it, it's kind of like they're, other than Hi-Fi Rush, a lot of the games are kind of mid, in my opinion. They're just kind of like, Kind of dis games. I don't know. If they bring Halo, then I'll probably be uh, going crazy over it. Next story: Nintendo Direct, February 2024. Everything announced. Okay, I, I didn't. Okay, look. Nintendo's off a perk, bro. They're they're. Look at that. Look at that. They had a partner showcase and they showed these off. Epic Mickey is coming to every console. That's that's a crazy thing. Star Wars Battle... Okay, I'm gonna cover... I'm gonna talk about that one later. Hold up. Gundam Break Breaker 4, I think, is coming exclusively to Nintendo. So I'm gonna definitely cop that. Loot Endless Ocean, I'm copping that. Look at all these games. Look at all these games that are coming out. World of Goo 2. Look at that. World of Goo... The first one was a banger. So all these are coming out on the day and... Uh, bro, now I need to get back up. Oh, great. Alrighty, last thing I'm gonna cover is, uh, yo, Asper Games redeeming themselves. That's crazy. They're, so they're releasing the Star Wars Battlefront collection, the, both the first and second one complete with the DLC. So we're talking new maps, we're talking, uh, Asajj Ventress and Kit Fisto's playable characters, and 64-ish, I think, player online. Probably says that right here. It's, it's 60 players. And here's the trailer right here, as you can clearly see. Oh, oh, that is... Fight your way across oh, boy. the Star Wars galaxy. In the classic Battlefront games. With massive 64-player online battles. And split-screen local gameplay. Fight with heroes. Never tell me the odds. And battle with villains. Bring me more Jedi! Get ready for the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. Launching March 14th. So you saw that? That looks dope as heck. I'm gonna be copying that. They redeemed themselves. They dropped like a crappy Star Wars uh, ports of KOTOR. 
not mad about that anymore because they just literally brought back my childhood to the big screen. We're going crazy on Asper Games, everybody. You already know. I might drop a few videos on that. Might do some crazy. You already know I'm going crazy with that. Your simulation days are. That is all I got for you. Let me know if you guys want anything like this again. There was just so much news and I had to get it out there. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going back to my cave to study and do other things. But I'll be back with another video soon. And thank you very much. Reject out.